Howdy, welcome to another Nonsense Wars production. Today we'll be taking a look at these two chain lifts I built. These are fairly straightforward chain lifts, and I designed them because I wanted to understand the mechanical principles that are required to get the chain lift to work. I first started thinking about this after Hugo Hahn designed his top gravity tensioned thick chain lift, and we take it for granted that chain lifts do need tension, but I want to understand why. So why do we need tension anyway? One of the promises of using a chain is, unlike a belt drive, the sprocket has teeth, and the teeth will interlock with the chain, so the chain shouldn't skip. Now, that's definitely true for a chain that goes sideways, but if you hold it vertically, all the slack in the chain gathers at the bottom, and if you turn the sprocket, it'll slip. Now, you could try to fix it by moving the sprocket farther away and putting it at exactly the right distance, but this is not exactly the right distance. You can see this axle is being tilted up with a bunch of force, and if you ran this, it would wear out. Furthermore, one of the promises of a chain lift is you should be able to extend it as high as you want without having to make major changes. So that means we're going to have to build some sort of mechanism to take up the extra slack. Let's take a closer look at the physics of what's actually going on here. If you have a vertical chain like this, and this is your top sprocket, what's happening is that the chain is hanging from the top sprocket. So from here, this total weight of the chain is pulling down from the top sprocket. This might be easier to understand if you mentally cut the chain like this. So you can see here, a bunch of chain is pulling down on both sides of the top sprocket. Here, it has to hold all of the weight of the chain above the point where you cut it. That means at the bottom, there's a lot less tension because there's only this little bit of chain left hanging. You can also visualize this by looking at an individual chain link. The top of the chain link is held by the force of all of the chain above it, but the chain link itself has to support the weight of every single chain link that's under it. So what's the issue here? Can't we just pull up on the top sprocket uh, like Pikahan did on his gravity tensioned chain lift? Well, Remember, the top sprocket is holding the weight of all of the chain. It's all hanging from the top sprocket. So if you extend the chain lift to be a lot taller, now you have all this chain pulling down on both sides. So you are going to need to pull up even harder and lift all of the chain. And this is actually what happens. If you make it taller, you're going to need more weight to lift up the top sprocket. Instead, we can try to get the chain to work for us. Since the chain is hanging from the top sprocket, all of this chain is tensioned already, and all we need to do is pull down on the bottom sprocket gently, and that will tension the chain. Let's take a look at how I applied this process on this chain lift. So on this module, this frame down here holds the motor and the drive system, and it turns the bottom sprocket. This can pivot, so it's actually hanging from the chain, and the weight of the motor and the entire lower section here is hanging from the chain. If we increase the length of the chain, this still applies a constant force to the bottom, and therefore will tension the chain.
There's one other effect that explains why you need the tension in a chain lift, but it's not obvious when the chain lift isn't running. Let's say you have a chain lift like this and you are powering the bottom pulley. What this is doing is that it's going to pull tension from one part of the chain and feed slack to another part of the chain. So here, if it's turning this way, it's going to pull here and it's going to push on this part of the chain. What happens is that this side will have more tension because it's being pulled and this side will have less tension because it's being pushed. The upshot of this is that when you're running it, the chain doesn't look like this. The chain looks something like this, or maybe it flips inwards like that. And both of these are no good if you're trying to carefully pull a ball straight up to the top. They'll fall out. Well, one thing you could do is just try to turn it around like this. If you drive the top sprocket, then this side is being pulled up, and the side, this side with the balls on it is being pulled up, and it'll be nice and straight, and the balls will get a smooth ride to the top. This side will be floppy and all, but there aren't any balls on it, so that should be fine. With that in mind, I built this chain lift. This one has the motor down here, and there's a long axle that goes to the top and turns this sprocket. So it's driven from the top, like in the diagram. And with this, I can get away with a lot less tension. If you take it apart, you can see that there's basically no tension at all on it, and it's just a sprocket hanging there to tension the chain. One other feature this module has is an unreverser. It's straightforward that the chain itself can only go in one direction. But if you go to a show with a GVC module, not all the modules will agree on the polarity of power. So you might have it plugged in backwards. On this module, the worm will crawl to the other side of this gear if you put in the power backwards. So no matter which way the power goes, the chain will only travel in the correct direction. This module is a little harder to extend than the other one. That's because the motor is down here, and you have to send power all the way up to the top through this drive shaft. So the extension needs to have these supports at regular intervals to keep the shaft from whipping around, but not so many that the shaft binds. The other thing you may have noticed is this worm gear just chilling out here, apparently doing nothing. And it's actually doing two things. The first is that this spacing is not a whole number of studs, so there's a gap, and the worm takes up that gap. The other reason is if I just use a joiner here to cover the gap, depending on how far you push the joiner together, you will be either pushing or pulling on the shaft of this motor and that will affect how hard the motor has to work and therefore how long the motor lasts. There's one other thing I want to talk about because it has consequences for the design of your own chain lifts, and that is the Lego sprocket. Here we have a six-tooth sprocket, and this sprocket is not round. It's actually a hexagon. And you can see this if you look at the places where the chain would actually sit. What's important is if you turn it this way, it's a hexagon going like this. 
and this hexagon is not the same width as that hexagon. What this causes is when you run this sprocket, it will flop the chain in and out like this and it change how fast the chain is going. This is a well-documented phenomenon called chordal speed variation, and it happens in all chain drives. This textbook actually goes into detail about it. There's an entire section here where they go through a derivation of the chordal speed variation. They also have a chart here which shows you how much speed variation you get based on the number of teeth of your sprocket. The Lego sprocket's over here somewhere, so that means we're getting something like 15% speed variation. So what can you do about this? Well, one choice from the chart is to use a bigger sprocket. This is the next size up, it's 10 teeth, and as you can see, it's a lot closer to round than the 6 tooth sprocket. Your other choice is to take your sprocket and run it slower. Because the chordal speed variation is a percentage of your speed, the slower you run the sprocket, the less total variation in speed you'll get, and maybe it'll be less likely to shake the balls off your chain lift. Now we still have to hit one ball per second, but you can deal with that by changing your chain and putting the pickups on the chain closer together. We hope you enjoyed this video where we went through the mechanics of a chain drive and that you found something that's helpful for your own modules as well. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.